It's Sunday in Monza, home of the Italian Grand Prix. In fourth place on the grid is McLaren's star driver, Ayrton Senna. As the start approaches, Giorgio Ascanelli, his race engineer, gives him some last-minute data. What do, what do you think? One PSI at the rear and uh, 7.4 for the front? This will be the 155th Grand Prix of Ayrton's brilliant career. He's won a quarter of them. He's been world champion three times and holds a record 61 pole positions. But he's found this, his sixth year with McLaren, difficult and frustrating. He's rarely been happy with this year's car because it's less powerful than the Williams. So he's been hard to motivate. In fact, he very nearly didn't drive this season. But Ron Dennis knows better than anyone the value of Ayrton's talent and worked long and hard to keep him in the team. He is fearless, he is highly talented, but he's also highly intelligent. I mean, on the upside, uh, that makes him probably the best all-round driver that's ever existed. On the downside, it makes life very difficult when you get into contract negotiation time because he's every bit a match for me when it comes to negotiating. The race at Monza, like every Grand Prix, really began three days ago, when drivers and team arrived for practice and qualifying. Thursday, Ayrton Senna flies into Milan in his own private jet. The rewards for a top driver in Formula One can be enormous. For Senna, they're staggering. This season, his fee for driving is reputed to be a million dollars a race. Racing with his other related businesses earns Senna an estimated $25 million a year. Ayrton is hanging on at the airport for Ron Dennis. What time is Ron arriving? No one else would dare keep him waiting. They'll go on together to the hotel. Half an hour. But no helicopter for sure. Huh? No, we've got a car coming to wait outside to pick him up. Both of you up. Yeah, OK. Hi. Hello. How you doing? Ron's close friendship with his mercurial driver was forged over five successful seasons. We just drive together. Yeah, of course. <laughs> I'm a passenger. Right, we hope. This year it's been put to the test. It wasn't until mid-season that Senna's contract was finally signed, and only after nail-biting negotiations. Uh, it was really a, an odd situation that the team wasn't ready. Neither I was ready to compromise much more than so much, you know. So we had to go hard and we had to fight. At one stage, he was sort of in his car on the car phone, you know, with, uh, like, I'm just you know, 20 minutes from the airport, you know, this sort of brinkmanship. Of course, he's probably sat in the departure lounge all the time, winding me up, but, uh, you know, you, you pay attention in those circumstances. Yeah, as a matter of fact, I said, forget it. It's over, I'm not coming. We're tough guys, and we're prepared to break each other. Uh, but we both appreciate that once broken, the relationship would be extremely difficult to put back together. Uh, it was an experience that I never had before in my whole career. And so, however, from that experience, I promised myself, this is the last one, I will never do it again, you know. But I think after the signature goes on the, on the paper. There is an overwhelming feeling from both of us that we've exerted and used a great deal of energy uh, just to arrive at a point which we could have easily uh, arrived at earlier if we'd just been a bit more give and take. But uh, that's not the sort of people that we are, and therefore the negotiation is always hard for. Senna heads off to the hotel. Waiting at Monza's rain-swept track is Giorgio, his engineer. I notice the weather, so I, don't, I very much doubt Ayrton will come here. He's arriving at 4 o'clock at Linate, and he was coming with Ron in a helicopter, but the helicopter hasn't left Cannes, so I think uh, the chances of coming here probably... Right. I think he goes straight to the hotel. Yes. Yes. Giorgio would have liked his driver to visit the circuit. It may add a little bit of frustration, if you wish, but uh, uh, it's not really easier or more difficult. Uh, I'm here to do the job and doing the best with what I've got. If I haven't got a driver on Thursday, I will do without him. It's not, it's not a problem. <laughs> Friday morning, the first day of practice. 
Ayrton's fans are already out in force. His immediate task is to get a briefing from Giorgio on the results of the recent car testing at Imola. Ayrton wasn't at the test. In fact, for most of this season, Ayrton has been reluctant to go testing. Two Imola tests. Engine. Um, we have had available to us a package of uh, a new fuel and a new oil, a low friction oil. The advantage on the fuel is about 0.3% on power, and on the oil is 0.4%. The total amount builds up to about 5, 6 horsepower. There is no problem of drivability, there is no problem of fuel, fuel meters so far. Lately, is not on the top of his motivation, a driver like Ayrton Senna with 60 pole position, 37 Grand Prix, three World Championship, and doesn't fight for the fourth place. Um, and I don't blame him. I don't blame him at all, really. Um, vice versa. Um, I knew him in better days. Oh, right at the beginning of the season when he could smell the victory. Then, then he's demanding, he's, he's pushing, he's, he's interested, he wants to check out every detail. So, thorough. Now he's, now he's a little bit different. First practice. There are 23 laps this morning to set up the car. This is the start of two days' intense dialogue between driver and engineer, as Ayrton reports back about the car's performance on the track. Most of the lamp advantage that you can get from a, from a driver is the fact that he is uh, try something new which he can trust and he knows how to dominate. Uh, at the end of the day, I don't believe drivers like uh, to trust modification which have been issued uh, under the comments of any other drivers, and Ayrton particularly. Uh, and Ayrton is so thorough and so careful that uh, any job you do, he's struggling to, uh, to accept it straight ahead, which means effectively the first time on the session you are spending time to show him what we've done and uh, what kind of benefit you can get out of it. There is nothing else on software-wise which you would like to try. I, I will uh, load the program in. You have auto low drag enabled as you've done the last run. Therefore, if you build up confidence and want to call for low drag before, just out of the, um, the Curva Grande, you are allowed to do it. I have not given you anything in gearbox function before. So I don't have. Uh, uh, I will have. Ayrton's teammate, American Michael Andretti, is racing for the first time at Monza, but it's Ayrton's 10th Italian Grand Prix, so he knows the circuit well. of the first day's qualifying, Ayrton is fourth quickest. Now, if Ayrton is to go faster, Giorgio needs all the information he can get from his driver. I can do better, man. And he's running. He's running. I can do better. Half a second. How is it? No, it's not too bad. Too much downforce, then? Huh? Too much downforce, yet. If you ran the curves, I could, I could, I didn't see you. On the, on the chicane only, the chicane. Can you do it? Is it, is it upset? No, you can do it. Okay. No, it's 
I'm, I'm not extremely psychologist myself. I think I'm Latin, and he's Latin, and therefore uh, we can establish a little bit of a better contact. Um, I am. I my work is to stay around him most of the time if he and and uh, grabbing information as quick as I can without pushing the issue too much and without upsetting him. I don't know how you can handle it. Okay. Do, you, do you want me to drive there and wait for them, or do you want me to stay there and get the, the map as quick as I can? Get the map. Okay. Ayrton. 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 Anything mechanical. Anything mechanical, I should know. Just. Uh, in the world of Grand Prix, his exceptional talent and a ruthless determination to exploit it have made Ayrton a superstar. He knows what he's worth and will accept nothing less, whatever its cost to others. In a modern Formula One, there is so much in stake between the teams and the organizers and the sponsors. It also all relates to drivers. If a driver corresponds to this, all the expectations, he got to have in return a similar level of, um, of uh, uh, return. Otherwise, he's not doing it right. He's giving away something. Oh, we normally talk in units of a million dollars. I think that's pretty serious money. At the end, you get paid what you're worth. You know, if you get paid one dollar or a million dollars, it's because it's what you can offer back. The only place is less of a problem is into parabolica and into the first chicane on the brake, right? Yeah, the worst is here. The here. worst is the second chicane yeah. and into the third chicane. Yeah. But it's because the asphalt goes like this in the third chicane and it's like this. In the second chicane is you're coming bumpy and then it's like you you go against the ground basically and the car is really down. You get low grip, it's tough. The day's practice may be over, but for the drivers, there's still work to do. Tonight, the drivers have to be on parade for the sponsors and their guests. Monza is a traditional time to think about the future. What is on everyone's mind is whether Senna will be with McLaren next year. <laughs> next year. <laughs> why? Why? It seems that every year comes this time of the year. It's always. Oh, you? Okay, okay, okay. 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 That, 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 that look. Next <laughs> year. <laughs> it's not the most pleasant part of my profession, uh, but nowadays, uh, professional racing driver is not only driving. There are a lot of, lot of other things you have to do, whether you like or not, in order that you can deliver the needs and the requests that the team personnel and team sponsors and fans and media and so on. Uh, particularly if you are successful, therefore there is, there is more of a pressure, more of a request for you to correspond. Yeah, well, I think I will go to bed early and she will go with me. <laughs> it's a better way. And I'm not the only one happy about it. I'm sure she's also happy about it. Oh. That's much better. Now you look at the impeccable yeah. Yeah. Bye. 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 Good luck. Saturday practice starts, as always, with another briefing. Giorgio is armed with yesterday's and last year's data, though with today's damp track, it won't be easy to make useful comparisons. Okay. 
No, you are going to fifth, of course. Full tank. That was full tank. Yeah. And I don't think we will do that today. With a dry circuit, it was. It is going to shift to fifth. Yeah. Okay. And also the asphalt is different, Lesmo. Yeah. Much nicer, apparently. Yeah. Looking in the wet is wet. You never know, but it looks much nicer. Probably quicker than last year. This morning's first challenge is how to cope with the conditions on the circuit. I think that the best we can do is trying to go out as, as late as we can. Unfortunately, everybody else is having the same idea. And as you can see, the Italian public is really, is really disappointed by the fact that the, there are no tracks on the circuit. The circuit is open since 12 minutes ago. You know, it depends if it gets properly dry in the afternoon, then it will make some difference. Otherwise, for today, we'll make no change uh, at the, the front of the grid because uh, the circuit is slower than yesterday. Uh, and unless it gets properly dry, no one will make a uh, good time in the afternoon in order to change the grid for Sunday. So, I have to wait. Senna is right. In the damp second morning practice, no drivers better their times. But even in this weather, neither driver nor engineer relax in their effort to improve the car. It's no good to be nice, you know, and to, and to take it easy because if you're going to be nice and take it easy, you might as well do something else, not uh, in Formula One. Uh, stay home or have a more ordinary profession. So. Being a competitive environment and a very tough one to, to live with, you have to be tough, you have to be hard. Sometimes it could be a little too hard, but uh, better to be on the, on the harder side than on the easy one. Mid-exit one mil down. From mid-exit one mil down. I like, we are going stiffer on the rear now, right? After the turning, I don't think we're bringing the front down. This mental strength is just unbelievable. If he applies it, he's, he's, he's the most demanding person I've ever worked with. And the others are not able to keep a very high level of concentration at, at, at the maximum limit for so long, like Ayrton does. It's final qualifying. Try as he may, Ayrton cannot improve on fourth position. As usual this season, his McLaren is not as fast on the straights as the Williams. It adds to his frustration. He also misjudges the number of laps he's done and comes in one too early. No, you didn't. You had, this was the last lap. You should have gone through. And not that it makes a difference, because it wouldn't have a difference. You wouldn't, I don't know if you could do a 22-0. I don't believe so. Yeah, maybe not. Fine. On, maybe yes. Yes. Because I take off. Get some time. And not that it matters. But from now on, I'm calling you the numbers of lap to go as you cross the finish line. I am calling you on the radio. Right? You got the message on the radio. I did, and I, I came last lap, last lap. What, balls? <laughs> you feel it? Oh, was it just coming down? In, slow lap. I, I tried to come, bring down, mm -hmm. and, then, and then go. Then go and so. Stuff. I think when you are chasing to prove to yourself that you can win races or you can win championships uh, is one thing. Once you manage to do that 
um, and therefore you know you can, you know how to do it, you know the way and you know it's what it takes to then be faced with a situation when you can't do it is really tough, especially when you know you are in a good team that has got the f resources and know how to do it well even better than you because they did more times than you. It's tough to take it. Sunday, race day. First stop, another briefing. This one starts with questions about fuel. I think that we can run safely 4% leaner for the engine. And uh, I think that the temperature is going to go up. Therefore, you will have another 2% less. So I put under 30 kilograms in the car. We'll see the figures after full tank, and then we'll think about what we want to do. What? And then you'll think about what you want to How do. How much? 130. No. An unscheduled visitor interrupts the discussion. It's former teammate Gerhard Berger, a driver with a more relaxed view of pre-race briefings. You got the bottle car? Yeah. Only me. Okay. From whatever you test him, yeah. and then we uh, try to work out. Yeah. But if you remember, it's just Friday, Friday, Saturday, yeah. Saturday. Okay. It's not long before Ayrton's 155th Grand Prix. Now, all his concentration is on the task ahead. You gotta have uh, a good awareness of the danger you are all the time, the risks you are exposed to. That's the only way for you to stay healthy in this activity, because otherwise you will inevitably find a bad day. You know, so. Naturally, as the time goes by, the more experience you get, the more learning you do, the better judgment you have over critical situations. And therefore, you know when you can go a little bit over the limit because you can and it's worth doing it anyway. And when you shouldn't because it's not worth or you just shouldn't because you won't get around it. Um, so, you know, every time I, before I go into the car, I, I fear very much my health or my life. You know, I know I have a well-built car, well-prepared by the mechanics, everything, but I am, I'm using it to certain conditions that not always the car is capable of coping. And, um, and I know I can die or I can have a tremendous uh, impact in my future life. Therefore, it's a, it's a critical thing. It's an attract, attractive situation because it is so much uh, question mark into it. And you got to use your instinct together with your experience, together with your desire to do it at a given moment, you know. It's a mixture of feelings that you have to play together, basically. A little bit of this, a little bit of that. Huh? You get the right mixture, the right taste. And so it's a challenging thing to do, but at the same time, you've got to be well aware of the danger you're exposed to. Otherwise, you won't get through the end of your career. <laughs> I'm alert all the time, very aware of those places and uh, the implications. So I am sharp. You've got to be sharp. You can't be indecisive. You have to be spot on. 
and it's something that uh, the consequence is your life. Therefore, there is no compromise. It's a dramatic start for Ayrton. On the first bend, he tangles with Hills Williams. Over the years, Ayrton's aggressive style on the track has intimidated many. His driving is as uncompromising as everything else about him. Fellow Brazilian, Nelson Piquet, even called him the Sao Paulo taxi driver. On this occasion, he's come off worse and dropped from fourth to tenth place. Over the next few laps, he works his way up to eighth, behind Martin Brundle's Ligier. Then on lap nine, he makes a rare mistake. It's the end of Senna's already slim chance of the championship. The most difficult I, I have con continuously is just an um, incredible desire to win and to to, to do my real best. And that is as strong as today as it was 10 years ago when I started Formula 1. And um, the difference only from 10 years ago is that I know today I can do it because I have done. I won three championships with McLaren, many races, being very competitive in all kinds of situations that you could be in. So I know that I can do it as a matter of results, uh, knowing sometimes that you just cannot do it because it's outside your control for technical reasons or whatever is, is really tough. Well, I don't think so. I think it was simply that uh, I didn't have enough ability to stop the car. Okay. Huh? Good luck. Yeah, that's fine.